Hey guys, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. Today we're going to take a look at setting up uh, Oracle in Spring Boot, uh, how to set that up. We're actually going to look at two different ways. The first way will be the uh, generic, I well, shouldn't say generic, it's more the uh, Spring Boot way to use the Spring Boot uh, properties file to set up the Oracle uh, database connection. And then there, there's times where you want to do more advanced uh, connection properties and it, it's kind of handy to go into the Java configuration. So we're going to take a look at both of those. Uh, configuration methods of setting up Oracle. And I, I do have a blog post that corresponds to this video out on my blog at springframework.guru. So let's take a look at this. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is set up uh, the Oracle dependency. And Oracle, due to legal reasons, does not uh, put their jars into the public Maven repository. So if you're in a company, chances are you're going to have a Nexus repository. And uh, if you're an Oracle development shop, it's probably already going to be a Nexus for you. If you are not in a company, you're going to have to go out to Oracle, download uh, the JDBC driver from Oracle, and then install it into your local Maven repository or into your Nexus server, one of the two, if it's not available for you already. So uh, here I've set up the Maven Palm. Uh, to bring in the Oracle uh, JDBC driver. So that it's going to vary by the version of Oracle that you're using. So uh, consult your reference documentation. Usually you have pretty good compatibility with the uh, different database drivers. So uh, you have forwards and backwards compatibility. It's not, not perfect. Your mileage may vary, but uh, based on my experience, uh, the JDBC driver is pretty, pretty solid from Oracle. Next thing we want to do is set up the data source properties. And in Spring Boot, we do this in application.properties. When you override the Spring data source, Spring.data source properties, uh, that will set up the, the driver. So here I'm telling it the URL for my database. I'm actually running an Oracle database up on Amazon AWS uh, using their uh, RDS service. And then you set up the password and username. And then also you need to give it the Oracle driver. And one thing, if you're going to be running Oracle, you're going to want to tell Hibernate uh, to use the Oracle di dialect. And right now I'm using Create Drop. That's more for my convenience so that the database tables get created and dropped automatically. Uh, if you're using Oracle in a production environment, chances are you're not going to be doing that. Uh, a lot of uh, DBAs will lock down the environments from develop developers doing any type of DDL operations, but uh, that, that's just an enterprise type thing. So now, uh, now the way we're set up right here, we only need this much of it. Um, this will create the Oracle data source connection. So when, when we start Spring Boot, it's going to go and connect to the Oracle database. Take another look at setting up an Oracle configuration. Um, so here, I've set up a, a data source, and this would be when you have some type of rack, rack environment uh, that you want to connect to. So you have some advanced properties on the data source in the JDBC driver that you want to configure. You can do this within Spring Boot by setting up these properties as uh, the Spring data source dot and then property name. That, that will work. Uh, but when I start doing this, I, I like to just switch over the Java configuration. That's not, not that much different. And in this Java configuration, I want to show you a couple couple things. So I've set up properties here. Um, I'm setting not nulls on username, password, and URL. And I'm going to uncomment this so you can see it a little bit better. So what I've done here is I, I'm telling this uh, I, I'm using the configuration annotation, so this is saying that this Java class is a configuration that Spring is going to use to get Spring Beans from. And then I'm saying configuration properties dot Oracle or Oracle. So what's going to happen is when Spring goes to create this properties, it's going to look in a properties file for something dot Oracle dot. So it'll look for Oracle dot username, Oracle dot password, um, Oracle dot URL, and why are they saying? And I'm setting up not null indicators on this, so if I don't set those by accident in my properties file, uh, the Spring context won't load. I'll get an error on start startup. So that's the type of behavior that we want when we're going through multiple environments in case a mistake or something happens. So 
then it, we have the, the bean annotation saying that this is going to be returning a spring bean and these properties get wired up. So I want to show you the actual application properties. Now we're going to be looking at this next section down here um, where you have oracle.username, uh, .password, and .url. So all those properties will get wired in. So now, now when I create this uh, data source, um, if I leave that if I leave this annotation alone, if I don't count it out, Spring is Spring Boot is going to see this and pick up this data source over its over the other data source and wire that in. So uh, that that will be used for your data source. Rarely would you want to have both of those in there like that. You'd want to do one or the other. So I'm, I'm just doing an illustrative example here. This concludes my presentation on configuring Spring Boot for use with Oracle. Uh, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you uh, give it a like on YouTube or head over to my Facebook page and give me a little social media love and like, like my Facebook page. John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru.